evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the CCN News Media On Point. And tonight we're on point with a variety of topics. My name is Wanda Carter. I'm your host. And I'd like to take just a moment to have uh, Miss Lavette and Miss Madeline introduce themselves, and then we'll begin this segment of the CC News Media On Point. Lavette, can you tell us who you are and what you do? Yes. Good evening. My name is Lavette Haynes. I am representing Lemo, and that's Lavette's in my opinion. So therefore, there are no arguments because it's just my opinion. <laughs> um, I am a cultural arts journalist with CC News Media, and I'm also uh, executive director of a arts organization, Westside Cultural Arts Council, and um, and knee deep in Garfield Park Advisory Council. And hopefully we'll get a chance to announce our Lagoon Fest before the evening is out. Absolutely. We got to do that. We got to do that. The Lagoon Fest folks are coming up. She's going to tell you all about it. Sure. Uh, on September the 16th, that's this Saturday, uh, from 10 in the morning until uh, 3 p.m., huh? we will be celebrating the activities around the lagoon at Garfield Park, 100 North Central Park Avenue. And this is our first annual event. And we will have a wonderful time sharing. Um, the grant is the grant that uh, that was funded was Together We Heal uh, by Department of Cultural, um, uh, Cultural Affairs. Mm -hmm. The case, that's what they call it, ah. not D C A S E, and um, and so we are we are going to just bring some attention to our natural resources and deal with the waterways from Lake Michigan to the hydrants at Kaumba Trey Arm Garden to the lagoon of Garfield Park, making sure that our water is safe. And that our fishermen who are fishing in the lagoon are capturing clean fish. Ah. So that's pretty much it. And we can expound a little bit later, put up a flyer. So we'll do that before the show is out. All right. Great. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Hey, Lawanza, how are yeah. you? Okay. Now, uh, what was uh, LaVette mentioning about you going to be doing something with the water? Were they going to yeah, be fishing? No, uh, we're going to have a lagoon fest uh -huh. this coming Saturday. Oh. She was just giving our audience an overview of the activities that will take place at the lagoon fest. Oh, she was talking and, about the clarity of the water. Yeah. Yeah, was... and, and one of one of the one of the um things that we're going to be highlighting is the water safety of the water. And what we're doing about that to make sure that, as she said, the fish in the water are fish we can catch and and consume. Well, maybe I can kind of help you out a little bit about that. Well, introduce yourself and tell us what you think about that. Now, remember, this is the start of the show. I'm just having folks who go around uh -huh. and introduce themselves and, and make whatever announcements they have to make. And then we're going to start this, this segment. OK, uh, well, you know, I'll just say. I used to work as an environmental chemist, uh, testing water quality per EPA um, oh. standards. Yeah, uh, you know, I did it over at IIT starting as a technician. I worked for the Chicago Park District oh. in the late 90s, and I'm the one who used to test the water in all the lakefront beaches and the uh, lagoons uh, in the city of Chicago, uh, Lincoln Park, uh, and, uh, you know, uh, museum uh wow. and the oh, one for the water yeah 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 i used to do that so i i'm very interested in 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 doing more about um your pro your plans to uh, check for the water quality uh that that's that's of interest to me the vet you hear this brother yes and we need to make sure that the water is safe um we are doing a survey that day 
so that people can sign and make demands from the park district that we do have safe water. And uh, so we'll be talking a little bit more about that a little later, but we do have a campaign going so that uh, we have clean water and we know that the pumps are working in the lagoons. Um, and, you know, I think it was last winter before last, uh, people thought that the lagoons were poisoned because the three lagoons over on the west side, uh, Douglas, Humboldt, and Garfield, all had dead fish. And so we did reach out to um, the Chicago Park District, and they explained to us that because the water had uh, become so warm, and then it was a freeze over, a lot of the fish that were coming to the surface suffocated. So it wasn't as though someone threw poison in the water because some of the residents, they were freaking out. But we did inquire and, and, and we were informed that it had something to do with the freeze over and the fish were not able to come up and get air. So a lot of the fish died in the lagoons on the west side. Mm, interesting. Boy, every time we do this show, I learn something new. We're going to talk later, Luanza, about um, maybe having, maybe you will come and attend the, the fest and um, and get to uh, talk with some of the, our uh, visitors about the water safety and so forth, uh, because Lavette is going to be doing that. She has a speaker that's going to be doing that. And uh, maybe you uh -huh. can come and just... Um, just well, come what Linda. I'll say about that, if you are you finished? Mm -hmm. Yeah, what I'll, what I'll say, you know, the sanitation lab, a guy named Steve Parker, um, he worked in the sanitation lab, that's what they called it, for the Chicago Park District, and he used to test it, you know, year round. Um, and anyway, well, that, you know, he did that for, you know, I think he was soon retiring. And so, here comes the new millennium. Well, the Chicago Park District, to my understanding, uh, no longer, at least going to new millennium, was not doing the testing of the the waters. Uh, they outsourced it to, uh, like, stat analysis clinic over in the medical district. I, I know they offered me a job one time. Okay. Uh, you know, to work in a laboratory, and I had already worked in, in and so they had a contract to do that for the city. Um, the the lab used to be under the rafters of the old soldier field before the remodeling on the west side of the field. A lot of people didn't know when you pass uh, by Soldier's Field going down uh, South Lakeshore Drive, you see that facade on the outside, but actually underneath uh, those rafters in the rafters under those seats was a chain of offices uh, mm. that, uh, you know, used to be, because, you know, soldiers field, so they had some sort of business going on back in the day, you know. Okay. We don't have whatever. to move on. We have to, we have to cut it short and move on, but mm -hmm. uh, um, perhaps we can get you, put, mm -hmm. your, uh, put your number in the uh, name in the chat so that Lebec can follow up with you. Yeah, sure. Uh, for the and, for the CRD program, yeah, and I just like to say that I was uh, I was over at the park the other day. Someone called me and said that the police were uh, at the lagoon, and what we found out is that it was the Illinois State Conservation Department. So oh. that might be who is uh, checking the lagoon out. So I got to follow up with them because they were in the lagoon. And we didn't find out. I didn't get over there in time because someone called me and I didn't get over there in time to question them. But I started thinking, oh, well, maybe they have something to do with knowing. Um, that we coming up on Saturday. Right. But And so I did call them. I didn't get a, a response, but I'll reach back out to them tomorrow. And then what we would like to happen is for people to um, take a survey or sign up and let us know that you have an interest in what's going on in the lagoon. And when we have our forum, 
then we can invite everybody out. Okay, Luanza? Yeah. Okay. All right, thank both of you for I'll, the I'll, I'll put in my information, you know, if you need okay. that. Okay, I appreciate that. Okay, uh, Madeline. Madeline, take take give us a give us an introduction uh, on who you are and what you do, and then we're going to start uh, this segment of the program. Yeah, I um, uh, work in the criminal law area. I have a, a couple of a few spaces that I work in on behalf of individuals who are incarcerated. Um, the majority of our work currently uh, for the last three years has been at in the state prisons. Uh, working to get people um, either get their sentences commuted or uh, get them a pardon. Uh, and now the work, in fact, has extended to another category because now, in fact, this is this just happened this week. One of the cases that we had that we were pre prepared to start working on the clemency report for Actually, uh, we just got some new evidence on his case. It's a rape case. And um, his daughter, which caused him to get incarcerated, actually Ooh. was located by a couple of family members. And she wants to come forward now and recant the statement that she made that got her father incarcerated. So oh, that, puts, that puts us in, a, in a, 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 a position now that we had not been functioning in. Um, of course, again, since I don't have my law license yet, I did talk to a couple of lawyers to get some advice about the best uh, method to go forward with uh, to make sure that we get him exonerated. Because even when you present new evidence, that doesn't necessarily mean that everything is going to go smoothly so that you end up walking out of prison. Anything can go wrong. So this is a big deal for us. And, and for me personally, it's a big deal because it is my first case where I'm actually in a position to finally see someone uh, exonerated and thus coming out of prison mm -hmm. after being there since 2012 at this wow. point. Okay, well, thank you for that info. And I wish you the best of luck with that case because I'm sure that person <laughs> Uh, would would appreciate every effort that you're making to help them get out of prison. And if you oh. got new evidence, then uh, uh, all, all I'm I'm sure that 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 is uh, uh, the probably the best way to go with to get that out there so he can he can get his case appealed. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, his case no, that's not the way it works. He already filed. He had already filed an appeal. Which oh. was denied. The oh. appeal was denied, um, and and it was and the denial really was simply an affirmation of the finding that the uh, circuit court uh, had determined when they convicted him. Hmm. So, um, in fact, at this point, he's actually uh, on the way to the Supreme Court to try to get a petition for leave to appeal. Uh, the finding of the appellate court. But now with this new evidence, we really can bypass some of that. And and my information is that now we, in fact, can go directly to the state's attorney's office. The case was heard in Cook County, so that's where we'll be going. And the state's attorney has a lot of power to bypass uh, the court system in part Um and actually move the needle in a way to actually uh, uh, look at the evidence that was presented at the circuit court level that resulted in his getting convicted and sentenced. And they're able to move uh, the process along in a way to actually get him exonerated. So we'll be going directly to the state's attorney's office. That's wonderful. Well, go, go girl. Oh, I'm so proud that I'm, and I'm sure his family is, is, is proud. So, um, wish you the best of luck. Thank, Thank you, you for that information. Sure. Brian, welcome to the show. How are you? Uh, yeah, I've been better, but, um, I'm trying to overcome these, uh, health issues that I've been dealing with lately, but, uh, how are you guys? Tell us, uh, tell us a little bit about you, you and your work, and then we're going to go on and talk about Trump. 
and his capacity to run for president in the U.S. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm very much so looking forward to that topic. Uh, I am a photographer, writer, and advocate for uh, inmates, uh, particularly wrongful incarceration. Uh, and those who have been wrongfully incarcerated, I should say. And and so uh, I, I would imagine that uh, since you and Madeline both and Sarah as well, you all are focused on uh, wrongful convictions. That must be a very large or big, uh, grandiose kind of uh, situation. Like there are a lot of people seemingly that are being wrongfully convicted. And, well, uh, yes, and, 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 and what happens is for one, the, the system is very much so biased and unfair and repressive to people of color and also not just here in Illinois, but even throughout America. All right. And uh, hey, that's what I'm hearing. That's what I'm hearing from you all. So I think that uh, it, it, this what you're working on probably should be viewed as a movement and you guys need to collectively do whatever you can to support one another because I'm sure the people that are imprisoned so, so hope that you are able to help them. And I hope, I, I wish them good luck as well. So let's move on. Um, I got some information from, I want to say Dr. Spivey about uh, Trump being able to run for president even though he has been indicted and may end up going to prison, uh, is is it is is it possible, in your opinion, that he could, in fact, run for president as a convict, as a imprisoned person? Could he do that? I mean, has, does anybody know? Well, according to the Constitution, and what is it, the 14th Amendment, I believe it is, mm -hmm. that basically due to the fact that he caused an insurrection, he's ineligible for the presidency. So is that, is that because, I mean, is that as a result of if he gets convicted or is that because just because he's been indicted? No, uh, because he called for an insurrection. Oh, because he called for the insurrection, but it but it doesn't have to be proved. I mean, I, we know he did, but it, it, until the courts say that he did officially, um, the, well, the question needs to be asked in the Constitution. Do they state that there has to be a, uh, you know, a determination by uh, the justice system? Does the justice system, period, get involved uh, with making a call that there was an insurrection? We don't know. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, 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 and, and, and uh, for one, and, and, and to my point, too, is according to the 14th Amendment, he's not eligible. We all know he called for the insurrection, whether it, is, it has been, quote, unquote, proven in a court of law or not, he called for the insurrection. He was impeached over it uh, for the second time, I might add. And, 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 and it, but again, it's one of those things that Congress, that the congressional body needs to enact upon to right. bar him from hold, uh, being able to run for the presidency. I don't see the congressional body acting upon it for whatever for whatever reason they need to act upon it and enforce it and disallow him from holding or running for the presidency a second time or a third time but as as we all know um the congress the senate specifically has been very very slow at even bringing this matter to court but but listen to this Okay, it says, I was just checking it out, right? It said that the legal actions, now I'm, I'm reading from um, CBS News. Okay. It says, 
is the legal actions invoke what is known as the disqualification clause, section three of the 14th amendment. And the provision has now been cited in two lawsuits brought by voters in Colorado and Minnesota who argue Trump is constitutionally ineligible to hold federal office because of his actions surrounding the January 6, 2021 assault on the U.S. Capitol. So there is traction taking place to, to make this a reality. Now, how the government and how the Supreme Court and how the judges, I think all of that has to pan out because sometimes as you're looking at situations being brought against him and then he's figuring out which judge or which circuit court he can request something of and it might be a trump judge or it 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 you know that gives him this leeway and so that's what he does best he has been known to be one that Delay, delay, delay through court yeah. action. Yeah. So, you know, just like the wrongly incarcerated, they don't have the funds to fight. Yes. Right. And so he has been charged with uh, manipulating his funds, you know, quiet as is kept. He's we probably have more money than he does, but because he's un, knows how to finagle the money and 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 raise money through his packs and spend it any kind of way. If it had been others who did exactly what he's doing and what he's done, election he, fraud, they would have been in jail a long time ago. So this is a, 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 a society that favors the rich and mm -hmm. ignores the poor. Ooh, now that's a cold statement. And that's a bit, that, that's a very true statement uh, mm -hmm. in that that's, that's what the history has been. Mm -hmm. That's what the history has been. Um, I was, I'll go ahead. Were, were you about to say something else with that? No. Oh. Okay, so I was looking at uh, uh, what this um, Joy Reid has to say about Trump. Let's just take a minute, look at this, and then uh, I wonder, we looked at the other one. So Don't scroll away, it's Senator Warnock. Listen, in 2022, over 400... So admittedly, I am not a lawyer. But something tells me that this is not what a defendant wants his lawyer to be saying on the TV. President Trump wanted to get to the truth. He desperately wanted to get to what happened during the 2020 cycle. He did it in the courtroom. He did it in lobbying legislatures. That's all First Amendment. And then at the end, he asked Mr. Pence to pause the voting for 10 days, allow the state legislatures to weigh in, and then they could make a determination to audit or re-audit or recertify. But what he didn't do is, you know, send in the tanks, tell Mr. Pence, don't go to the Capitol Hill. What, what happened, Wanda? Something that would obstruct the, the due process of government. I'm sorry. I don't, what, are, what are you doing? I was just showing you guys what she, what happened with, with uh, Trump. There, there is just silence. Oh, y'all don't hear nothing? Mm -mm. I, I I hear it. I'm I hear it. it. Oh really? I heard it also. Oh, oh okay. I'm not hearing anything. Oh well, that's okay. Uh, um, you uh, probably needs to have a driver. Is not a sound driver. Probably needed in Zoom. She probably or well, whatever she's using phone. Probably don't have it to pick up. But that. I heard it because she played it earlier before the show started. Oh, you heard it then, right? Mm -hmm. So maybe okay. it's something that I have open. Let me just go ahead. Just proceed. Okay. Um, Hold on. I'm a, I'm a let it play for three minutes and then I'll stop and come back and we'll talk about 
uh, what's and I have a com I have a comment. Oh, go ahead. Um, this is concerning. Um, again, this is uh, from Black's Law Dictionary, which is kind of like the the le one of the legal bibles, if you will, for okay. all legal terms and so forth. Um, can everyone hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay, super. Um, okay, so what it says here is that, uh, and I'm going to cut to the chase with this, no person shall be uh, in the elected president and vice president or hold any office under the United States or any state who, having previously taken an oath as a member of Congress, um, or as an executive or judicial officer of any state to support the Constitution of the United States shall have engaged in insurrection or rebellion against the same or given aid or comfort to the enemies thereof. But Congress may, by a vote of two-thirds of each house, remove such disability. That's an important point right there. See, yeah. he has not been convicted. He's only been indicted. Uh huh. He has not been convicted. He hasn't even gone through all the pretrial phase of his case. So, and so legally. And so legally, he's eligible to run for the presidency. See, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. That he can still run for the presidency because they have not. It's taken them two years to take that man to court. What does and I can he tell have you, on people? He must have something really serious on these folks that they are scared to take this man to court. Well, you got to consider the fact that the legal process itself is, you know, it, it takes a long time. It's convoluted. The red tape, you know, they go through all of this stuff with uh, the, you know, Congress having the hearings and all of that, and they want to broadcast it. That takes a lot of time, too, yes, you know, just to does. set all that up. You know, do they need to have to do all of that? You know, I mean, you know, they're going to make a decision whether you look at it or not, you know. That's right. And, and, that's, and, you and know, what and, you're saying is absolutely true. And and do you all know, of course, I know you've heard this via the news, that now uh, Hunter Biden, Joe Biden, one of Joe Biden's sons, uh -huh. who is... Um, who is known to have drug problems, drug addict problems. He's about to be investigated. And Joe Biden is also going to be investigated because it is alleged that the two of them have been involved in dealings that were questionable and that may be, and I'm going to underline may be, impeachable, impeachable. So that's a new development. Oh, man. And that just happened uh, yesterday. Today is Wednesday. Can you imagine how we look to the rest of the world? You know, right. yeah, it, it, yeah. We got. And I can got, also, have... and I can also tell you guys this: Joe Biden is in, in serious trouble. The Democratic Party is in serious trouble. And what do I mean? Joe Biden will lose this election. Why? because of all these illegal immigrants who are being allowed to come into this country. There are a lot of angry people, myself included, who are not happy about this mess. Because what it says is that you're not taking care of all the citizens of the United States who are homeless, who are struggling, who have had financial problems, et cetera, et cetera. You're letting all these illegals come in here. And that is not wholesome for the United States. And one other thing I'm going to say in connection with that, uh, several weeks ago, uh, there's a, a woman, P. Ray, she goes under the name of P. Ray on, she has a program on WVON Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. She had, a few weeks ago, she had Donald Trump's former 
national security advisor to come on her program to talk. And he talked about why all of the illegal immigrants are being allowed to come to the United States. And he said, this is all about the connection to the drug cartel. That the people yes. coming to the to United States is related to the drug cartel? That's exactly what he said. And he said that all of those illegal immigrants who are coming to this country, and for example, those people who are coming to Chicago, think about this, guys. Chicago is a major hub in the United States for transportation because it's in the center of the United States. A lot of these immigrants who are coming here, he didn't even say a lot. He said all of them who are coming here, they're going to be set up in housing. They're going to be set up in um, whether it's apartments or houses. But Chicago is a perfect location at, for immigrants to be coming. This illegal, and they're not migrants, by the way. They are illegal immigrants. That is precisely what they are. And he said that um, they are going to be, they're, as they're coming here, they're going to be connected to the drug cartel to set up expanded distribution points. And keep in mind, as this man is talking, he was Trump's national security advisor. So, of course, he would know all of this stuff and he can put it out there because he has nothing to lose. He's no longer in that position now. And that is exactly what this guy said. And I did hear, in fact, uh, last night or early, early this morning, that there were illegal immigrants selling drugs, okay, in some area of Chicago. Somebody said they saw that happening. Well, that's not surprising. People who don't have no money, they don't got no jobs, they're not eligible. But yeah, you, you're going to definitely see that. Yeah, well, but in the meantime, as we know, the uh, city council divvied up, uh, what was it, $51 million initially, and more money has been spent, and more and more money is going to be spent. They're going to be placed in housing. They're getting uh, clothing. Uh, I mean, a lot of resources, school, the children will be able to go to school, so... All of the resources, my information is that all of the resources that they will need, they will get. What happens to the man and woman that sleeps under the bridge today in the cardboard box? What resources are they getting? Can, are, can they get the same resources? You, you know what, sure, that's man. an excellent question. Sure. And it's something that we need to be putting before the uh, City Council of Chicago. And I'll tell you all one other thing that needs to happen with the City Council, because um, the uh, Latinx, Latinx people, they put out an announcement, and this came through on the, uh, again on this particular radio program. They uh, have an announcement out about uh, jobs available in several categories with one caveat. You must be bilingual, lingual, and to that end, you must speak Spanish. Now, that is total nonsense. Yeah. English is the language of origin of the United States. And my and my statement is we need to go to the city council and I'm prepared to do that, to tell them, no, this will not happen. You must create an ordinance saying that English is the language of origin of the United States and you cannot allow anybody to come here and try to impose Spanish on the U.S. population and thus to deny them the opportunity to apply for any job because right. they're not bilingual. Right, right. That's exactly that's, that's, totally that, that's another sign. That's another sign of classism. Well, guess what? You now, even jobs, because uh, we this was an issue with a black organization on the west side uh, announcing an, a job opening. And the criteria was that you be bilingual. So we're like, wait a minute, this is a black organization and this job is in the black community. 
And this is automatically eliminating most of the black people unless you know how to speak Spanish. Right. And so you've got your hospital jobs, your restaurants, your legal uh, companies, your, you know, and they're all saying on, on the application, you have to be bilingual. And so that is eliminating so many people, black people, That's from right. applying for these jobs. Right. And I would just recommend that our children learn Spanish. That's just it. Uh, Levette, that's all well and fine, but the fact of the matter is, again, English is the language of origin of this country. Think right, about I this. I, I yeah, could I not go, I, there's not a country on this planet that I could go to and say, well, uh, and, and have a uh, start having an influx of English speaking people and say, well, English is going to be the, the primary language of, uh, let's say, France. And so you can't get a job in France unless you're speaking English. I mean, how ridiculous does that sound? And I can tell you I, that the government I, there would not permit that. I do think it's ridiculous. But what I'm saying is that the reality is that, and this is not something that just happened yesterday. This is why you will go into the hospitals and you don't see black women. Black women used to have those jobs uh, uh, intake. And now you just don't see that. And so I think that Chicago should declare should, uh, what is the word, de-declare or renege or take back the fact that it is a sanctuary city. And the reason being is because sanctuary cities don't allow you to vet the, the, the immigrants or migrants that come to the city. You don't know if they're, if they're gang members, drug dealers. It is, and this is what Lightfoot did. She put it into law. And so we need to revisit this law that says you cannot vet these people. That's the issue. And so you've got people coming in that are criminals that have, uh, that's not under our jurisdiction to even do anything with them. Now, there was some woman a few days ago that attacked the police or did something and they said that she's in jail now. But trust me, her, the, 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 uh, what do you call it? The, uh, the, uh, the counselor, they will, uh, they, they, they have to take them to, uh, I forgot the, you know, the terminology. Where You're talking you, about the, the embassies for these people. Right, right. You have to take them there. And so it really puts black Chicagoans and New York's New York uh, uh, people in such a disadvantage. I think they they were saying that New York now has a hundred thousand immigrants. And so it there needs to be something done where this doesn't just disrupt the country. Because the, resources, the resources are the main thing. And uh, I was trying to help someone look into housing. And uh, so I was like, okay, well, let me make the call and, and see it, you know, if I could just get some quick answers. I was on that phone at, at over 40 minutes until I just hung up and I was like, oh, okay. So this is what's going on. If you are a citizen, you can't get through. And then I was, uh, I took someone to uh, a, a, a food pantry and the woman that was directing the information to all the people in line, she was speaking in Spanish and every other word she says, she was holding up this document, she says, and da 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 da, Medicare. And da 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 da, Medicare. And da 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 da, Medicare. Really guiding them, like this is Medicare, this is how it works. This is what you qualify for. So the resources that 
my people, I see my people can't get. It doesn't apply to other people. You don't have to have a license. You don't have to have social security card. You don't have to have birth certificate. You don't have to have all of these uh, requirements if you're an immigrant. But if you are just a regular citizen, you are under scrutiny. You've got to prove everything. And so it is a, a very insensitive moment that we're living where I'm seeing so many of our people, you know, they're, they're, they're on canes, they're bent over, they, they, you know, they're subjected to whatever these drugs are on the street. They're just falling apart. And so society doesn't care. It's like you you can be discarded so fast. It's like just get out of the way, and you know, and and there's a a a, a plan in place, and it does doesn't seem like it includes us unless we can unify around some issues and make a difference. I don't know if anybody knows George Blakemore. Does anybody on here know George Blakemore? No, I don't. Okay. George Blakemore is downtown. He's an older gentleman and he cusses everybody out. He's on Facebook if you want to look him up. And he is cursing these people out every day downtown, demanding that the water reclamation department does this, demanding that all of these departments are in compliance and, uh, and serving the residents of Chicago. And he's the only one down there. And it's like, you know, as much as I want, I was like, you know, I don't like him all the time. But when he's talking, up, because the other day he was showing um, the uh, construction site. And he was like, not one black person. And I've gone through the whole city and I've seen so many crews and there is not, black people are not working on the construction sites. And so these people are employed. These people, are, they just had a crew shipped to Wisconsin that the, the, the immigrants, they were shipped to Wisconsin so that they could be employed. So while we are either not encouraging our young people or our young people are so disengaged and so wounded that that motivation is not there. And it's like, you know, it's a, it's a, like, it's a, it's a tipping that's about to happen and we need to have some control because when the commander, the superintendent of police, comes out for his first engagement, that was last week, his first engagement was to Pilsen. He went over to Pilsen to, uh, 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 to assure them that the police department was with them. And I was like, okay, so when is he coming to our neighborhood? And the, the, the next message was, he's not. The only thing that he's about to do is address the elected police, uh, community police people. That's who he's going to speak with. And I guess after he speaks with them, then he can, they can come and tell us. But there was no scheduled meeting for him to address the black community. Then we need, to, we need to make a comment about that. We need to, if that is something, if he did that for the Hispanics, then we can talk about that. Right, we because that's your, a where, do your article and let's, let's bring that to somebody's well, attention. He ain't saying none of that Johnson ain't letting them do. I, I know, but what the, the, it's just the perception, right? And that here we are ignored again. And so, you know, it's like how much 
can you bear when you contact you're let's contact the, uh, the mayor let's contact his office there's something and, i want to to say you know through all of this you know with this illegal immigrants and and all of that you know the largest uh these people, you know, you, you just can't just look at that they're illegal immigrants. And there's more, you know, there's more to the pie than that. You know, they got a religion. Most of them are Catholic, right? They're Christian Catholic. Um, and see, this is this is important uh, because, you know, the largest archdiocese is here in Chicago. It's larger than archdiocese over there in New York. Also, the largest Catholic parish in the city and in the nation is St. Agatha. I went to grew, they had me going to K-5 and took me out. And so this is a silent partner uh, and contributor to, to this crisis, particularly in this city, you know, that we lived in. Um, when you, what, what gets these people together are the individual parishes. When a parish goes out, uh, in one of their communities, it, it it makes TV. You know, you don't see that about no black uh, churches. We got so many of them. And so the silent partner, uh, that bishop over there, what? That's our bishop. What 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 is their role in uh, supporting? You know, illegal uh, immigrants. Uh, you know, uh, their influence on on government. See, this is silent power that you don't hear anything about. I know they're certainly not in the black. Uh, neighborhood doing anything because they know parishes uh, too much in the black neighborhood, but not today. And and when there was, they, they, we didn't have much influence going on with Cardinal Cody. Remember him back in the 70s, 60s and 70s? So th this is, this. if you want to talk about that, you got to talk about that archdiocese because, see, these people, they contribute heavily uh, to the coffers of the Catholic Church and the uh, Archdiocese in Chicago. Mm. The the Archdiocese plays a pivotal uh, uh, position and role in in supporting uh, them being here and them getting a lot of the leeway and and benefits that we, we're hearing about both locally uh, and in the state as as well as nationally. Not to mention what what's coming in over here from Rome. You see. Yeah. Um, th this is important, yes. Yeah, because one thing is that as they're being placed in our community, they will become residents That's who right. are qualified to vote. That's right. So there is no mistake. No mistake. No and 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 so if if we're not encouraging our our young people and and having them see that they're becoming second class citizens. That's they're, right. They have to get behind uh, uh, these people because as long as there's been homelessness, as long as there's been homelessness, as long as there's been a disparity in in resources, I've never seen them deliver water to the young to the people on the street. That look like me. I've never seen them deliver clothes, bring uh, 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 trucks to shower, you know. And so when you look at all of the police departments, all that, of the disparities you just named, go on, sister. And when you see the immigrants laying at the the foot of the the police departments, you see resources being brought in to them, food, clothing. Uh, uh, you know, and I'm not saying that that is uh, a, a, a condition that is warranted because it's not. That's not humane. But the thing is, is that someone is looking at the humanity of it and doing something about it. Whereas our people who are on the street, who are homeless, That's right. what they're doing, they're taking their shelters and tearing them down. And, 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 and just like um, when COVID happened. And they were able to build a shelter at McCormick Place, even though it didn't really fill up. But now on 115th, I think, in Pullman, they just produced a campsite where there's like 300 beds ready to take them off the street. 
and to put him in a in a shelter. But just that, you know, and that just it just sort of hurts, you know, that you see that the same consideration is not being given for your own kind. Yeah. Well, and here's the other thing that's going to happen. All of these illegal immigrants who are who are being allowed to come into the United States, um, there's two, two things, two factors for us to keep in mind. Number one, Haitians are not being allowed to come in here, come to the U.S. like keep that. Keep contact, no Africans. Keep talking. And, yeah, the Sudan, Sudan, Sudan has a major crisis go, happening as we speak. They're not being allowed to come to the U.S. Okay. And the reason, there's another reason why these illegal immigrants are being allowed to come here. They're being, they're coming here to actually replace us African Americans. That's the other thing that's going on. The need for black folks in this country technically ended with slavery. And so all of the social engineering and the uh, the other practices, uh, disparage practices, all the criminalization of, of Black Americans, all of the stuff that has been going on has all consistently been about marginalizing our people, emasculating our, our Black men, and, and, and really finding, looking for ways to, to end our, our presence in the United States and and so this influx of all these illegal immigrants, that's a big part of it. And also remember, guys, that uh, Pritzker got a, a a bill passed so that these illegal immigrants can apply for and become police officers in the state of Illinois. How insane is that? Oh, and they don't wow. have to. They don't have to be citizens of the United States. Who ever heard of such nonsense? But he did that. And, you know, I want to ask a question now. And, and Levette, you know, made reference to this earlier about illegal immigrants, you know, getting citizenship, the right to vote. Uh, I say in that in the backdrop of the work that King was doing, with the freedom fighters down in Mississippi. Now, mm. one of the main arguments that they were making was that, look, you know, you get all of these, these uh, black men and, and black people being lynched down there in Mississippi, especially because, well, you know, if you can't be a registered voter, well, you, 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 you got, you got to be, a, you got to be a registered voter. Otherwise you can't sit on a jury. So we're looking at the prospect, uh, and, and incidentally, when's the last time anyone uh, in this in this forum been invited to sit down in a jury? I, I'm 63, I've never been to one. You know, I don't know anybody I've never else. Been, I've never been called to uh, sit on a jury, never. Okay, and, and I've been a, vote, uh, a registered voter uh, since uh, uh, 1979, and, and, and so, uh, you 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 have you have the prospect of these people who have no history in this country. They're not very politically sophisticated. Anyone, and many even Latino politicians will tell you that the black politicians next to the whites are are the most politically savvy and sophisticated uh, in this country because of how, look what we've gone through. And so you get the prospect of these people sitting on juries, standing in judgment. You know, of us, it only takes one black person. It takes one person to to create a hung jury, you know, and say, "Hey, I, I don't agree with," you. right? That's so right. This is a dangerous thing going on. Oh, I heard it. Very on. dangerous. Uh oh. So, uh, uh, it what what action should we contemplate in terms of? Now that we've discussed that Trump can, in fact, until he's convicted, run for president, we know that he has amassed people from around the, the world to, to stand behind him. 
you know, it's no, it's no longer going to be a shock to us that, what was it, 70 million people said that if he ran again, they would vote for him? Do you that, really believe all that stuff that they said in the news polls? I think they're lying. But they they, they may be. They may be. But should we sit back and say they're lying and do nothing to amass some support for the fact that we know now we're uh, the the Hispanics are the new niggas in town. Well, we all star position. Well, 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 you know what? This too. <laughs> you know, it, it, okay. W.E.B. Du Bois once said, "A system cannot fail those it was never meant to protect." Come on okay. now. Now, this is something that black people, whether they be Democrat, Republican, or even independent, for whatever reason, don't seem to get. Uh, Mike, for example, our community and our economic culture and structure, that's something we have to do. That's not something that the government can do. Now, I mean... Of course, now it was also said by Abraham Lincoln that it is the responsibility of government to do for those who basically who cannot do for themselves. Okay, I believe that, but it wasn't meant for people to make a way of life of it. Yes. And another thing too, why integrate in a world that has made it clear they don't want you? And it's obvious with the direction that that I guess America is trying to go with the immigrants coming in uh, coming in from uh, Mexico or wherever, what they're trying to do. So we need to make a move ourselves, and that's rather hard to do when you get kids that's just all out of control particularly black kids that are just out of control. That's why we, we as a collective, our consciousness has been risen. We now know, each of us in this forum, that we have a responsibility to our children, to our generations to follow, to help them understand the situation at hand. And that is that we as a people, those that, that understand the common thread we share, recording in progress. We need to work to save our children, to inform our children, to help our young people understand that we know what's happening to us today is a ploy that we have to inter intervene. We have to establish some kind of a strategy to help our young people move into and throughout this system that they have become victims to without any knowledge of theirs of their own they they we we are just beginning to understand why things are the way they are this too this too okay one thing i i will say on a, a, the president's level you can make a case that fine biden and even Pritzker may not be perfect but they are a whole lot better than the extreme right wing Okay. I mean, it's, ob it's obvious the direction that the right wing, that the quote unquote GOP grand old party, it doesn't exist anymore. I mean, because they have just gone further and further and further to the right. And moreover, the GOP party, they're the bigots. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and those, are, those are some of the biggest bigots that you will find. And, you know, me personally, you know, 
if you're going to do, as far as immigration, if you're going to let Mexicans in, why not let other people like uh, from Haiti and Africa and Ghana, what, uh, Ghana, Africa, I'm sorry, and Nigeria, Africa, come over here too. I mean, yeah, I mean, let them all come in. I mean, there are people, and this is something that a lot of our, another thing that a lot of our people don't seem to get, a lot of those Hispanics or Africans, Native Americans or Arabs, they'll come over here and take what to this country and they take what they can get. They will put their money together and they will buy a building or a storefront and spend money back home. But for whatever reason, why don't we seem to get that? And, and I think that's what George Blakemore was saying today. He said, we've got to do something so powerful like if we, like when the Million Man March happened, I, I love watching the ticker tape on the stock market. Even though I don't know what the heck I'm looking at, but I'm like I'm just looking at those abbreviations and seeing how one day it goes up and the next day it comes down, right? And so when the brothers, that this is what happened when the brothers went. I watched Monday morning. And the stock market almost crashed because we did not spend our money in society. When we went to the Million Woman March, the exact same thing happened when we came back. It was a dent in the economy. And so George Blakemore, if you all look him up, that's what he was saying today. He was like, if we're going to effect change we got to hit them where it hurts. Yeah. And we cannot spend our money. We got to figure out what gives us the autonomy to have a voice. And and right now, our voice is muted. And Lavette, you're right. We can change that. We can change that. And, and uh, by the way, guys, I just saw in my news feed that the 2024 budget for the city of Chicago is already predicted to be $538 million short. And a third of that shortfall is because of the illegal immigrant crisis. <laughs> How about that? How about that? How about that? Yeah, hmm. and it's so, not going to get better. So what they going to do? Worse. What they going to do? Put, uh, raise your raise taxes on your pop to get? Uh, no, they need to put these damn people back on the uh, oh, no. them out. The, I, stop letting uh, uh, Abbott in Texas let these letting all these people uh, letting those people come up to uh, uh, the Chicago area or go. They, that needs to stop. We need to have the clamps put on that and have that city council tell them. They must make English the language since they don't see it, seem to have sense enough to do it without someone coming there and telling them they better do it. We got to get, uh, go to one of their Wednesday meetings and say, look, you must uh, write an ordinance saying that English is the language of origin of the United States and cut that mess out about us having to be it's nice to be bilingual, but it should not be an imposition. Right. I mean, right. Yeah, you 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 can't demand that. I I think that's wrong. That needs to be revised. But uh, but again, if you're gonna do that, like I said before, why don't they let some people from Haiti and Africa and and and, and they're and, not trying to. Do, and the United States is not trying to do that. We already know that they're not letting Haitians come here, nor the Sudanese. <laughs> Uh, they're not letting those people come here in droves like that. They're just well, not because they don't want them here. Oh, so, so guys, anybody, why don't we why don't we uh put together each of us some bullet points about action, some action points? What do we do now? Now that we all know, yeah, okay, this is going on, been going on, gonna keep on going on. What are we gonna do? to start to deter what's going on, to start to change it, manipulate it. Who do we need to see? What do we need to do? What's an action plan? And that would be a legislative process. 
Okay. You, you know, I, I'm going to tell you something. You're not going to, uh, I mean, legislation is, is, of course, is important. It's, it's powerful. But you're not going to, in this society, uh, legislate uh, yourself into uh, having full citizenship and, and, and civil rights. You know, though, you that has to be part of the, the plan, too. You have to have some economy because you live in a capitalist uh, uh, system. Uh, and so uh, in order to compete, that's where you're going to be. Now, I have a background uh, in science and technology. I've done chemistry and engineering, the real stuff. Um, and for people to be self-sufficient, to, to feed themselves, not have all of these uh, deserts, uh, food deserts uh, and, and what have you. We, we need to have more scientists and engineers. I'm going to tell you something. Those those groups that we discover that are the most successful in the society. Look, I've been a fellow over there at one of the top schools in the country over at Northwestern uh, was offered to go to the Yale. You know what? Uh, those people who are the most successful look at what they do technically. Look at what they do technically. Well, look, the people, how many professors do they have, you know, uh, with PhDs and all that? We we, we got to start going in, in this direction. Do you know, back in the 80s, they said that a quarter of all PhDs were over there in Japan. Why be dogged? In the 80s. Uh, it's unbelievable. Or maybe, the, I can't believe that, but they say that's true. So you, you got to do, you got to have this sort of thing go. In regards to the eligibility of the president or the past one, to hold office, we're, we're, we're dealing with a nation of laws based on precedent, uh, cases that came before. So in order to predict, make a judgment on this guy, you got to look at the most uh, uh, infamous uh, so-called anti-patriot was Benedict Cardinal. What did he ever go to jail? What happened to him? Mm -hmm. uh, people since that time, you know, uh, who who done what? Uh, Trump is, 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 you know, alleged to have done, uh, you're going to have to look at those type of cases on the federal level and state to, to make a, a, a projection. A, yeah. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? But I it is it critical. It is critical. So, but but I'm speaking more of what do we as a collective do to start channeling our efforts toward making sure that any youth we come in contact with, our objective should be to help them understand the importance of knowing how this system works. I think we have to demand that they not, that they uh, reject this city being a sanctuary city because this, this influx of immigrants is not going to stop. Because you're saying your city is is a welcoming city mm -hmm. to immigrants. Now I know that they didn't expect this, you know, because I remember it was a it was a, 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 a I don't know if she was Venezuelan or where she was exactly, but one of the churches protected her. Remember? Ayala, I was going to talk about Ayala back in the 19th, and she stayed up in there. You couldn't right. do that in no, no message of after the AME church. Keep on talking. Right, I was going right, to say right. that. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> they had no Out idea. there in California, yeah. Right. And, no, and no, she was had, here, and then she went to California. Yeah, I'm sorry. Right. And they had no idea that that one would turn into thousands. <laughs> and so, by them declaring this a sanctuary city, Mm -hmm. We, as Black people, need to say enough is enough. Uh, 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 denounce that law. Well, it's I want to ask you the question. I raised this before, and you know, uh, you, you're, you're talking about it. Ayala here in Chicago, a parish, she stayed up in there for over a year, okay? Mm -hmm. And they couldn't go in and get a warrant to to arrest her and take her and seize her. So you know, I brought this business back up about the Catholic Church, the relationship with Rome, and particularly the uh, Chicago Archdiocese being the largest one in the country. Okay, let me tell you something. I was down in Springfield as as a wanted, working for the government. 
you ain't got no Latinos. Shockingly, and they're passing all these laws. Go to Springfield. You will not see them in any of the stores working nowhere, doing contractor work. I was shocked by that. But, but getting back to what I was saying, what 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 role has the Catholic Church and the Archdiocese had in going from making a church a sanctuary and their influence on expanding it to 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 the larger metropolitan uh, uh, cities like Chicago, where they have a very strong influence? I'm telling you, you 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 you, you there 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 is a silent partner who's very strong, who these people give their money to. Okay, mm -hmm. who have mm -hmm. strong influence in government and politics, and and also stopping them. That's going to stop these these uh huge uh, Catholic churches from closing because they're closing like you know like the regular stores. And so this influx of people it gives them parishioners. Huh. <laughs> Wanda, uh -huh. did you lose your breath? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so we're the ones don't have a plan. Wow. Yes, That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. We need a plan, guys. Mm -hmm. And, and oh, this plan is what I for do. real. I, I mean, y'all bring y'all, you all are hitting on some key essential information. But you this know, is something that I want to say before I forget, because my brain is not that tight all the time. And I think I just forgot, so carry <laughs> on. I, I, you know, something I wanted to say, you know, I, I moved over here in this uh, neighborhood, uh, Grand Crossing, and in the building I live in, I, I was, you know, coming from the north side, been on the west side, I did not realize the the, the, how serious and pervasive the gang subculture is on the south side. It, as a matter of fact, it, it it dominates the the standard culture. If you ask, especially in relationship to a black a male and female relationships, you have young women who have relationships with gang members who are paying their rent, paying for the cars and all this sort of thing. And, yep. and, 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 and I didn't realize it was like this. And so you, you, you have, and, and this is um, promoted um, in, in the music, you know, cause they already gave them their own class of music to listen to, to keep us separated along gender uh, and, uh, lines. Cause when we were growing up, you know, we dropped on a, on the Stalas, uh, the Spinners or the OJs or Gladys Knight, Aretha, just like, uh, just like our, our parents did, you know, so they got to separate on that. And so um, you, we got to do something about this pervasive subculture where you have a gang, you have an industrial uh, uh, prison complex uh, uh, mindset and, and subculture that has permeated and dominates the the, the social uh, narrative in, 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 uh, in, in our communities as it relates to, to young men and women. And, and that's the reason why we, we, we see this burgeoning, um, you know, uh, of, of 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 criminality, you know, no, not going on. That that that. What what can be done to to intervene? You well, know? I, I I I'll say we are Wanda and I. We're part of a music mm -hmm. studio, and the music studio that we're part of refuse to produce that kind of music. So we embrace the young people that we know and nurture them so that they're the catalyst for change. It's got to be, because when I talk to young people, sagging pants and all of this, kind, I was like, y'all need to talk to each other. If you don't <laughs> like something, and so the young man happens to be my grandson, he's producing music that is appealing to his, uh, to his peers that says, we're not even going to listen to that. And as a matter of fact, he's in the studio tonight because he's one of the performers of, uh, on Saturday. And his premise is, 
to deal with the megahertz of water and how the vibration of water matters. And so the music is being produced with a certain vibration. And that vibration is part of the airways. And that's how you can control your masses. So we've got to have our young people understand that they're being manipulated and they're being controlled through the airways. And once our young people get it, they do make a difference. They do make a change because a lot of young people now are vegans, changing their diets, not eating certain things. So something is clicking. Oh, and oh. this is what I this well, is what I was listen now. This is what I tried to remember. Um, as we move forward, a part of our problem as well is that even though we're talking about Trump and what we don't like and what is possible and not possible, you've got people that look like me will lay down and die for this man. And it's like, what is it that they're not seeing? So there you have conspiracy theories floating around where people just reaching and grabbing them out the air and just like, okay, well, I feel like this is what's going on. And I heard this and I believe this and I heard that. But the bottom line, I don't know who said it. I think it was Brian that this group that is the 70 million that say that they're behind Trump. These are people who want their race to be privileged. Say so they don't give a damn about the truth. They just want to be privileged characters, just and, as and, America and, and, uh, 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 built this country on certain group of people having privilege. They didn't care who was being hung on the tree. They didn't care who was being shot. They didn't give a damn about the humanity of man as long as they were in the front of the line. So when you've got people like this, then you can't rationally speak to them because no matter what truth you tell them, just like they say, well, I don't, I don't care if Trump if he shot somebody, it's got to be a reason. So they are, they are loony birds. So here we got a bunch of loony birds <laughs> that's about to run this country. And so we've got to stand up for what is right. But isn't that the way things have always been in, in the first place? What what has happened is that these these this this so called purported marginalized unsatisfied white folk because they don't get everything um, they um, have I'm, I'm a lost lost track of what what else yeah 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 get back to what I'm saying don't um, be like me. yeah I get this quite a bit I was putting give me some incense going you know but anyway. Uh, this is the way they have always been. Uh, what, what they're doing is not something that is uncommon. We, for the first time, are really being given the chance to see uh, through Trump as, as a mirror of uh, magnifying the attitudes and behaviors that already existed in the first place that have been covered up during the civil rights period because the post uh civil rights period this type of behavior and attitude had been prevalent all the time right, you know? right. okay so this is all this is nothing new and so right. what he, he's doing he is just you know uh these people do not want to change with the time the world is changing not just the united states but the world is changing and so what 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 this has done and now the media has changed we we are there and, and they're talking more about uh actions that people who have been traditionally mar and historically marginalized have have experienced and so what you're seeing is not uncommon it's been that way all the time mm -hmm. And to your point, it, you're absolutely correct about it being that way all the time. And here's the thing. What, when we look at the Democrats versus the Republicans, and I always, I've always i been saying this for decades. In fact, I've never declared allegiance with either of the parties because at the end of the day, 
the similarities are um, they are apparent. I mean, here's something that we need to keep in mind. The Democratic Party was started by the Ku Klux Klan. Some people know that. Some people don't know that. Well, it was a segregationist but, party. It was a segregationist excuse, party for years. Well, I know, but the bottom line is the Democratic Party was created by the Ku Klux Klan. Damn. And we know what the Ku and we know what the Ku Klux Klan stands for. Now, all that said, see, and I said this early on, Joe Biden will lose this election coming up because there are a lot of folk in this country and a lot of, lot of black men, I'm going to say that, who are very, very pissed off about all about Biden because uh, this stuff is flowing through the federal government. His al alignment with his being at the helm of the federal government and allowing all these illegal immigrants to come into the United States. There are a lot of blacks and a lot of black men. Keep that in mind. Who are very, very angry about that. There And there are a lot of black people who are very angry about that. And I'm one of them. Okay. So now that's what that is. Madeline, Madeline being angry. And no it's not, it is not just about being angry. Excuse me, Lavette. I want you to know this. When I say I'm angry about something, I'm not just wanting to be angry about something. I believe in taking an action, which is part of it, which is the reason I'm doing the work that I'm doing. Right. And that's why I was getting ready to ask the question. Being angry is uh it's like the question would be. You know, and I don't like that the best of two evils, but here you have a party that has given everything to the rich and nothing to the dis to the to the to the to the person to the ones on the bottom of the totem pole. You and what have the, the Democrats done? Party. And what have the Democrats done for the okay. last sixty years? Okay, okay, but listen to this right now. You've got one group, okay, if you just look at this, you've got one group, they're, they're trying to lower the, 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 uh, the medication. They're, they're, they're trying to uh, 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 forgive the student loans. They're, they, and this is evident. And then you got this group over here that's saying, we don't want to give you no relief. So when I look at the two, I'm not just a Democratic fan, but I'm just looking at just the bottom line stuff. They, they, they look just in the last couple of weeks, the tax credits for the children expired. And now they've been thrown, more children have been thrown into poverty. Where here, this group of people, they just keep saying, well, we're going to give the money to the one percenters and keep giving them tax breaks and keep allowing them to have offshore uh, bank accounts. And so Richter. here's the group over here that, 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 and so that's my, 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 like if, if we were to choose, I think I would want to choose someone that's, that's in, in your face saying, we want to give this. And this group is saying, we don't want to give you a damn thing. We don't want to give okay. you the, no. And so, so, and they're, they're doing this. And they're Levette, I, Levette, uh -huh. Levette, I got to stop you right there. Joe Biden, Joe Biden was the co-sponsor of Ronald Reagan's Anti-Drug Enforcement Act, which required in the, uh, that bill was passed Around 1986, I believe it was. Right, two out. I remember what he required, said. Which required that anybody caught imbibing crack cocaine would would be sentenced to an automatic five years in prison. That and began. What was wrong with that? What excuse was wrong? me. Excuse what me. Was... That uh -huh. started. That started the explosion of the black prison population. But and Joe Biden, Joe Biden was the co-sponsor of that it? legislation. Right. And, but guess and, who supported it? Guess who what? brought it to light? The black, the black, black uh, politicians, because 
they would dying like flies. And, and who are, and who are the black politics? What party did they primarily represent after in 1964 when uh, Johnson signed the Civil Rights Act? Act blacks flooded into the Democratic Party. Okay, and so okay, then, well, well, uh, another thing, another thing too. Excuse Johnson, me, I didn't. Let me Johnson, say this. Let me Johnson, say this. Let me say me, this. Excuse me. No, excuse me. I'm going to say this. Johnson was one of the biggest I'm racist presidents you'll find. Okay. okay. He only right. he only did that. He only did that to get the black vote. He wasn't interested. Okay. Well, it doesn't matter. Damn it. The bottom line is he did it. Okay. That was in 1986. Hey, he was, he was a Joe Biden co-sponsored. Joe Biden co-sponsored that legislation in 1994. Then we had Bill Clinton, the president of the United States, sponsoring the, uh, I mean, uh, creating the anti-crime bill, which was by any accounts, the most draconian crime legislation in the history of this country. Biden even said for himself, example, he made a for example, made a I don't want to hear that. Him. He was okay, the sponsor of that he legislation. He made a mistake. He Joe Biden mistake. was the sponsor of that legislation. Okay. Himself, Joe Biden mistake. did more. Joe Biden did more damage to the black families, to the black people, uh, black structure in this country than Donald Trump could ever do. Okay. Uh, no, he, no, he, Trump but is a malignant did. narcissist. Right. An inept and, malignant and, narcissist. He, he did cares not for do no as one much. But Trump cares for Biden no one but done, Trump. Biden has done Trump the worst. Cares for no one but the Trump. Worst. Well, well, can I can I say something? You know, we're, we're we're talking about these Republicans, but you you know, let's just break down the Republican Party for what it is and and how how did it get like that? Because that was the party over, that over, over yeah. the last over the last forty plus years, the Republican Party has gone further and further and further to the right, and it's gotten yeah, so. But but, but how yeah. did that happen? A party that uh, of Lincoln and and we were better off in Bronzeville. Most of the black people were Republican back in those days exactly. at the time. Of, exactly. And so 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 you have to ask yourself what happened. I'm gonna tell you uh, uh, what happened, and a lot of it has to do with certain uh, phenomenon that we see going in president politics. We just had an insurrection, and then a person who wants to be a fascist dictator, you know, Trump. So you had the third right. And you, you, you know, after the uniting of Germany under, you know, the Kaiser, you know, because they, they never were a com they were never a country. They were a bunch of fiefdoms, and then they were united under the Kaiser, and then they went into this business of getting fascist, and then you know, you see the rise of, of Hitler. What happened was when World War II came to an end. We know about the history of Brown brothers, Harriman, the Bushes, and all that. And what happens is the fascists begin to infiltrate uh, the country and they go through the Republican Party where blacks had been dominant, you know, uh, players, you know, to some extent, you know, in their uh, in their in, uh, incipient uh, 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 political uh, experiences here. Uh, and, and, and that was a party of business uh, producing money, and it was about capitalism. And so, it, and so they gave you FDR, giving you this uh, social uh, services type of uh, economy and society, and Black people began to trickle into there. Why? Because they, they cre cre created a depression, and they did it deliberately. And so this is how you begin to see how the social politics begins to change. Now, uh, they infiltrate the, the military. Uh, you can tell by certain iconography. Uh, uh, Brown goes into NASA because, you know, they were doing jet uh, propulsion uh, uh, work over there in Germany. And you see that now in the NASA program and they go into the. And so that's the problem with the Republican Party. So you got to begin to call that out mm -hmm. to, to, to do something about that. OK, because uh, we should be able to participate in either one of the parties, especially a party that is about business and producing capital and making money, because that's what we don't have. And we ain't never going to get it. We're never going to become equals uh, through the legislative process. Who ever heard of, of somebody doing something like that? That makes sense. You, you're so right. And, and, can I, and I just wanted to say one thing about, you know, when I think about even even watching the movies, uh, uh, Superfly and all of that, 
you know, they, they, it, you know, they say art imitates life. And you had men and women that was just sitting by, raking in the, dr the drug money while our people were dying. And so were the laws right? I don't think so. I think that they could have thought it out and made it better. But who's blaming the black people that was killing black people? Right. And so that's my my issue is here you've got all of these black people making all of this money on the death of our people. So you had black politicians that were on board with this law that Biden and all of them were supporting because everybody in the whole world is watching black people die like flies. So I'm not saying that that how they did it was the correct way, but nobody ever talks about how it was the black man and and the you know and the black woman that was allowing their people to perish. So I'm not making any excuses for the Democratic Party, the Republican no Party. We gotta we gotta be responsible for our own demise. And someone stepped in with something. Was it right? No. It wasn't all the way. Hello. Okay. Even even now, you know, who's selling drugs to our people? Us. Mm -hmm. Right. And so if we don't talk about how to repair ourselves, then everybody can just come in and take advantage of our weaknesses. So we've got to be able to strengthen our own communities. You know, as I was, as Luan well, It's got to start from within. That's what you're saying. It's got to right. start from Absolutely. within. So, yeah. you know, and when we argue, and when we argue about all of these people and what they did to us, and a lot of it is what we did to ourselves. Mm -hmm. Because just like the argument now is like, okay, do do we go with Trump or do we go with Biden? If whatever Biden is doing, you've got people trying to help the least of them. But if you look at the Republican Party, they don't give a damn about nothing. No, nope, not at all. Not at all. Not at all. Not at all. And that and and that is not and. And that is not, we got to look at that, you all, because what we are also talking about, we look at the school situation, see, because I work in criminal law and I was talking to uh, some folks, in fact, Wanda and I had a very robust conversation about this uh, within the last couple of days, right, Wanda? Uh -huh. And we were talking about, in fact, what's going on, uh, you know, with the quality of education. Yeah, it starts and it starts. It starts from the moment that, from the time that a child comes out the womb, mm -hmm. the parent is uh, supposed place. to be providing uh, uh, examples to children in terms of how uh, learning is supposed to happen. I'm on a Zoom call, uh, and so that's and that's what's supposed to happen, but it's not happening, unfortunately, like that. And so now we have we have an education system which has been so so um, disparaging as far as how our black children receive the quality of learning that they're supposed to get. And and most times you and I know you all know if you live in the wrong zip code, you're going to get a shit can education. That's to put it succinctly, okay. And that's been happening for decades and decades. Uh, has it gotten better? No, it has not. Yeah, but it's a lot of worse. these people need to take some responsibility. I mean, no one's stopping them from going to school and, and doing their schoolwork and, and getting a high school diploma. Now, so, to some extent, to some extent, I, I, I have to be able to differ with you because, you know, these uh, uh, st uh, teachers have to go through all kinds of loopholes, jump through fire, have all to have yeah, all kinds of accreditations and, and 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 all of this sort of thing. 
uh, now that black people started becoming yeah. uh, teachers, that was not the case yes. uh, back in, in the 60s. So you, these okay. teachers are, are, are more than qualified uh, than they used to be. It is the attitude that about, one, uh, well, In fact, I was going to leave out home, here in the morning. Uh, because you know, I got cash. Uh, uh, I can hear you talking. So I need to go to hear you talking. So can you hear Yeah, yeah. And 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 so and so. Uh, uh, you know, I'm a single guy. I meet people out here. I've met women go over to the house, and Delco had a kid come up to you and ask you a question about something in the textbook, and your natural inclination is to want to help them. And well, if you do that, well, you a know it all. But see, you're a woman. See, you can go do that, see, uh, uh, around a man's kids and ain't nobody going to do it. And so this is the kind of attitude that our, our people need to stop. See, this kind of attitude that goes down. Hey, if I was a single uh, 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 mother and got a son and I'm uh, uh, dating somebody or got a friend and he got information and he can teach my kid, hell yeah. And, and he's decent. He's not harmful to them. Of course, I live with a person. Got multiple degrees, uh, uh, a damn near 4.0 student, engineer, and the kids are flunking in grade school and in high school. And I step in to, and she asked me to help them. And I began to help them do their work because I know what it's like to uh, not be a good student and, and have a hard time understanding. So I know how to bridge that gap. Uh, guess what happens? I, I, uh, start teaching her kids. She started getting jealous because the kids understand it from me better than her. See, this, this kind of attitude's got to stop. And see, my point is, is whether they're educated or uneducated, the sort of attitude that they have about how to to raise their kids and educate them, it doesn't make any sense. You know, you get this one about that. And and I think that's part of a systemic society that we're in. You know, because when you look at the root of what you're talking about, and I'm talking about the root of it, we are the only race of people that don't look at the root of our circumstance. And if the Jews can still claim that the Holocaust affected them, we need to understand that this systemic society that we live in has damaged us beyond repair, except through the grace of God, if we can pray and we can figure it out and work it out where there's a phenomenon that happens. Because the Black race has always had phenomenal moments that have taken them to the next level. And we're at that point. Because as Emmanuel closed down all of these schools and said that Black teachers were so dumb that they couldn't teach. I don't know what happened to her. Uh, <laughs> what happened other than the children were displaced from their communities, they were forced to cross gang lines. They were forced to drop out because a lot of them, the schools were contaminated with lead. So we've got to look at the systemic situation and just know that it is the totality of our being that's been damaged so badly, okay. right? And, 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 and Lavette, I want to add one thing when any child has to worry, especially now, more about survival, you know, in going to school while they're in school, and even when mm -hmm. they're coming home from school, they have to worry more about survival versus learning. I mean, how do you learn like that? Right, because I can't. I mean, if I'm stressed out, my brain don't work. Well. So I can imagine how they feel. You know, I see sometimes I see, and then here. You, you know, like my granddaughter yesterday, uh, she ran behind the back of the house. She just, and then she said, oh, you told me to pick my bike up. And I had to tell her, you can never, she's uh, six. I said, you can never get out of the sight of someone. You can never go somewhere where no one is watching you and you don't see another adult that you know. You cannot put yourself in that position. So these 
children know they're being kidnapped, they're being taken for body parts, they're being <laughs> Look at the stress that they are living under. And so we cannot be in a vacuum and not understand that there's a multiplicity of issues that would take us something phenomenal happen to happen for us to be on the same page because there's so many pages in the book and we're all we on so many of them that we've got to maybe come come together in one understanding say for instance if we want to talk about this being a sanctuary city then we have to be focused on that issue because it's so many issues that we sometimes uh, don't agree on that we can't afford to have that division. So we've got to figure it out, but we need to have one item that we can say, you know what? Well, we all agree on this. And that, and that to me, the one about the sanctuary city that's putting us in on the bottom of the totem pole, maybe we can come around that issue and 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 make a difference because we're not going to agree on Trump we're not going to agree on some other things but we've got to be real understanding that to know the difference that one group does not want you to have anything and the other group might want you to have something so we got to look at what has happened where this group does not vote for anything that elevates society. Nothing. They don't and, and, the and, and, and that and that not. that that and that in my opinion is the definition of repression. And also too, you can even go so far as to say bigotry. Right. Because and the alt right, they and then they and they, they and they tell you, you know what? They used to had behind roles. They don't and hoods. They come right up in the public now. It's like, well, uh, we're gonna vote against this and we're gonna vote against that. And and we're gonna vote against black kids having to learn the truth about their history. They, you know, look at what they're doing. And so here, if we wanna have our children to have any pride in who we are, how can we allow this society of Republicans to say, oh, you, you, you want to claim you woke. Yeah, when we in the 70s, we woke up. And so what they want us to go back to sleep. And well, you so know, you, you, well, people, people, those who have that kind of mindset, they have no business in politics at all. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's a that's 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 so demeaning and destructive. And how do our children wake up in the morning knowing that some white person has said, oh, we don't want to teach your truth. You we just want you to learn about our truth and what we did and how we conquered. But no, not you. You we don't want to talk about how you were hung by, in, in trees and, and, you know, because history repeats itself. And it's just like, you know, across the nation right now, you got these rogue cops that's beating the hell out of black men and women. And so, and they're all a part of the Republican Party. So we got to- and, 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 and police officers who, do, who engage in that type of conduct, they have no business in law enforcement. They have no business in society. I mean, right. Well, you know, she she's talking about you know to get back to this business about instruction that these kids are receiving now. You know, if you notice the curriculum, I don't care what state you're in, it's pretty much the same. And I'm not gonna say who these people are, but there's a, a, a an elite group of people out of New York who are very much responsible and influential in the development of the academic curriculum. Uh, based on the Horace Mann School of Education, you know, um, that that we see. And, and, and also, there was a, a, a guy who was a professor, mm -hmm. Dr. Asa Hillard, 
you know, he did. He, you, if you want, want to go ASA Hillard, H I L L A R D, go check him out on the internet. He's, he's now deceased. The brother talked about what happened to the African. What happened to the African mind to put us in the state of, 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 of mental existence that we're in? That when we were brought over here, it's like a computer. I'm a so I'm a computer scientist. The computer is dumb. It doesn't know anything but what you program it mm-hmm. to to know. And so the human mind was completely gutted. The African mind was completely gutted as much as they could. Uh, so for the purpose of them force feeding any kind of program that they want to up in there. It's like your Shelly Frankenstein, you know, created by the aristocrats, you know, um, and, and we're the, the new nigger Frankenstein. And so um, we we have to do a, 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 an anthology of analysis to, to understand why we are in a mental state, how do we get there, and what do we have to go about reprogram myself First, we must understand mm-hmm. uh, the, the the state uh, of not knowing uh, who are our, who we are in our history, and that's the problem with the young people. They have no memory of, of who are they are as a black person. We had uh, began to get some sense of that in the '60s, um, but that has fallen to the wayside, and so we need to to have that that new conscious uh, rising uh, again. Uh, in in putting in place community universities and and various other type of uh, social uh, you know not necessarily part of the uh, the state's uh, academic curriculum but one that we uh, fashion and uh, coin uh, for ourselves to, to educate our youth. That's why I went back to school to, to get, become a professor, you know, to be responsible for doing that thing. But in science and technology. We can't we can't continue to live in this society and think if we were given a bunch of money and said we can do our own thing, we would perish because we do not have the the, the fundamentals uh, mm-hmm. that is need to. We couldn't even produce our own water mm-hmm. unless we bought it from somebody. And I just wanted to interject that uh, a group that uh, uh, Wanda and I, we're part of the Garfield Park Advisory Council. And our president, Jenna Jameson, she's just partnered with a school to do coding for black girls. And so um, I'm not sure if it's just girls, but the bottom line is that what you were saying is that we need to develop scientists and and people who are uh, you know, it, it, because you're talking about AI and you're talking about robotics, I want my young people to understand that. So if the robot is coming toward me, they can program it to go the other direction. Because well, I, you know that that's that's good to look in the future. But I'm gonna tell you right now, we we need to have some some social scientists, and computer scientists, who can work on with the existing technologies and old ones that really are responsible uh, for running all of the systems that are current. ML, uh, machine learning, AI is, you know, in the future, but we need to just go ahead and just deal, not to to aside what you said, but we need to just go ahead and, and develop minds that work with the ones we already got. And I'm gonna tell you also this, when you go to the uh, State Board of Education, I have a background also in public policy research in the area of education. I know this, and I've mentioned it to someone uh, recently. You can go to the State Board of Education, for example, for Illinois, and I'm sure other states have a, a similar uh, template. And that is, you they have three lanes of of the way education can run uh, from kindergarten all the way through 12th grade. They have the minimum that you can teach, the very minimum, and the minimum would be, um, let's say, if you, uh, I'll give, I'll say the Kmart version, real, uh, practically nothing, almost a skeletal version of an education. Then they have the medium, the medium, which will get you, um, halfway, halfway there. I'll use it like that. And then they have the maximum, the maximum lane for education. When you look at that curriculum, 
it will and you would see uh schools like in Chicago like Walter Payton uh Jones College Prep the top high schools in in uh, this city which are by the way some of the top high schools in the country you'll see that type of education and that's at the high school level you have a similarity in the same type of education that's offered at the elementary level so it is offered, but how do you get there? I had a sister, she uh, didn't like school. There was an eight year difference between us. So I wasn't around her, I left home when she was 10 and I joined the Navy. The bottom line is she did not like school. She barely got through the eighth grade and was socially promoted out of the eighth grade. She didn't like school, didn't try to go, didn't try to learn, nothing. Did our mother try to push her? I think at that point after five of us, maybe she was tired. I don't know, but it didn't happen. And so when she had, she had six children and what happened to them? All of them turned out to be a disaster. Two of them became criminal institutional prisoners. Um, and it happened because she did not, she didn't like school. And so when I would sometimes talk to her on the phone, cause I was living in another state, I would tell her, give her suggestions about what to do. Did she take those suggestions to heart and work with her children? No, she did not. And now I was mentioning her as an example because conversely, I had said to myself and maybe to somebody else, I didn't want, I was not going to be a poverty statistic. So although I didn't always do the work the, at the level that I knew I was capable of, ultimately I did get it together. And by the way, yes, I graduated from Northwestern. And that was because at some point I said, and I had a child and I knew what he needed from me in order to start out on the right path. And he did. Now, a lot of these parents, you know, unfortunately they have children and they don't, they didn't like school. They're not trying to, do, to be involved. They, what they do is they drop their kids off at school when they're ready, let's say for kindergarten, even at the preschool level. And they just don't offer them the learning opportunities and because they don't either don't know or the both, they don't know and they don't care. They don't know and they don't care because they did not like education and all that it represented themselves. That's a tragedy, but it's a fact. And we know it happens. So how do we fix that? That's okay, the five thousand well, question. Okay, well, ladies and gentlemen, we've gone way over. So we're going to have to take an assignment. What do we want to follow up on for the next CCN on point. What are we going to talk about next week? Because I know it's got to come from this discussion. I, I'm going to say this and I'll make it real quick. You know, uh, how many people have worked at jobs that they can't stand and they hate them? You know what? We, we Everybody. And mm -hmm. so we, we just going to have to come to the understanding that, hey, uh, I don't like this schooling. I don't like this kind of trade and all that, but you know what? I don't like it, but I better do it any damn way. And just go ahead and man up and woman up and go ahead and deal with it. And you don't like it. You don't like your boss, but you got to deal with it. And, and that, that's just, you, you get, just grow the hell up and deal with it. That's all I got to say. <laughs> and ultimately, you can start a business for yourself. You can start, I mean, I've done that. I'm The, the work I'm doing now, I'm self-employed. Yeah. And it's because I know I do better when I, when I'm running the business, yes. I know I do better. And so I, this way, and I'm working with it now so I can create more jobs. I'm creating con contract opportunities. And so that is what I'm doing. And, 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 and a lot of us can do that and we need to do that. Yeah, running a business is not an easy venture. No, it's not. If, no, if it were, no. more of us would be doing it, but we can do it. And when we do it, we have to think about scaling up those businesses, creating million dollar multi-million dollar, billion dollar businesses so we can hire our own people and not be looking to Mr. Kazuski to hire our people. Come on now. There you go. There you go. There you go right there. So that's what we need. That's step one. Okay. Let's let's come back with uh 
at, send me some text on what you think our next discussion should be focused on. I'll look to hear from each of you. We're gone, ladies and gentlemen. Have a great evening. See you okay. tomorrow. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. 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 Feel, feel, feel better, Brian. I know how it is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Take care, y'all. Good night. All righty. Bye.